Hi, I am Sanjay Patel. In this video, we are going to learn an important formula about gamma function, which is known as duplication formula. So let us prove this. Prove that Prove that gamma of 2n is equal to 2 raised to 2n minus 1 upon square root of pi into gamma n into gamma of n plus 1 by 2. So let us prove this. We start with the definition of a beta function or a result about beta function. We know that we have derived this in the, our earlier lectures. So we know that beta m comma n is equal to 2 times integral 0 to pi by 2 cos raised to 2n minus 1 theta into sin raised to say sorry rather cos is to 2m minus 1 theta into sin raised to 2n minus 1 theta t theta okay in this uh, beta function formula i want to substitute m is equal to n so let us put m is equal to n in this So as a result, we get beta of n comma n is equal to 2 times integral 0 to pi by 2 cos raised to 2n minus 1 theta sin raised to 2n minus 1 theta d theta. Okay. I want to use that sine 2 theta formula. So, in order to convert this cos theta into sine theta into sine 2 theta, let me multiply and divide by 2 raised to 2n minus 1. So, 2 upon 2n minus 1, and we can write it as 0 to pi by 2, 2 raised to 2n minus 1, which I can write in this form 2 cos theta sine theta and this whole raised to 2n minus 1. This 2 raised to 2n minus 1 is will be cancelled with this, so it will be uh, the same expression. This is equal to 2 upon 2 raised to 2n minus 1 into integral 0 to pi by 2 sine 2 theta raised to 2n minus 1. Correct? So let me write this way sin 2n minus 1 theta other 2 theta d theta okay now let us replace this 2 theta by some new variable so taking 2 theta taking 2 theta is equal to t what i will get is uh, d theta is equal to 1 by 2 times dt also, uh, when uh, when theta of the old variable is uh, 0, the new variable value t is 0. When theta is equal to say pi by 2, the value of t is pi. Okay. So, putting all this in our integral, what uh, we will obtain here is Therefore, beta n comma n is equal to 2 upon 2 raised to 2 n minus 1 integral 0 to pi and this becomes sine raised to 2 n minus 1 t and d theta is replaced by 1 by 2 times dt. Correct? 
So just I have calculated this uh, values in our this result. So we have put beta n n is equal to this thing. Let us simplify further. This is equal to this two two will be cancelled here. Okay, and uh, I can write this as one upon two raised to two n minus one. 0 to pi sin raised to 2n minus 1 t into dt. Now I am going to use one result from definite integral that if we have a function, sine function here from 0 to pi by 2 or some combination of sine function, this integrand is a function of say sine, then uh, you can write this as two times integral 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to 2n minus 1 t dt. So what I am using here is this result from our earlier integral calculus course that is integral 0 to pi f of sin x dx, if this integral is a func function of sin, and this is equal to 2 times integral 0 to pi by 2 f of sin x dx, okay, integral 0 to pi by 2, let me write properly, 2 times integral 0 to pi by 2 f of sin x dx, okay. We are going to use uh, this result here, so we get this and this gives me, this gives me finally beta n n, beta n n is equal to 2 upon 2 raised to 2 n minus 1 integral 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to 2n minus 1 t dt. Let me call this as result number 1. Now I will obtain the value of beta n comma n in a different way. So for that I am using another result for beta function. We know that uh, integral 0 to pi by 2, you know that integral 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to p theta into cos raised to q theta d theta is equal to 1 by 2 times beta of p plus 1 by 2 comma q plus 1 by 2. We have this result from our earlier lectures and I want to compute this value using this. So from result 1 what we can do here is we can substitute, uh, we can take uh, this p is equal to 2 n minus 1 at power of sine here but there is no power of cos in this so I can take q is equal to 0. Okay, Take p is equal to 2n minus 1 and q equal to 0, we get integral 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to 2n minus 1 in the left hand side, integral 0 to pi by 2 sin raised to 2n minus 1 theta d theta because cos raised to 0 is 1 and here on the right hand side 1 by 2 times P of this p plus 1 by 2 is n and q is 0 so it is 1 by 2. This is my result number 2. Okay. What was 1? 1 is this. So in place of uh, in place of this thing this integral in place of this integral in 1 I can substitute the value 1 by 2 times n by 2. So from 1 and 2, what we will get is this beta n comma n is equal to this number multiplied by 
1 by 2 times beta n comma 1 by 2. So thus from 1 and 2, from 1 and 2, we have beta n comma n okay, is equal to is equal to 2 upon 2 raised to uh, say 2n minus 1 into 1 by 2 times beta of uh, just a minute 1 by 2 times beta of n comma 1 by 2 this is we are adding because of 1 and 2 okay so here this uh, 2 will be cancelled okay and I can write the value of beta n n in the left hand side as gamma n gamma n upon gamma of n plus n by using the relation between beta and gamma function you know beta of m comma n is equal to gamma m gamma n upon gamma m plus n this is equal to 1 upon 2 raised to 2n minus 1 this number as it is again using the same relation between beta and gamma function you can write this right hand side beta function value as gamma n into gamma of 1 by 2 upon gamma of n plus 1 by 2 okay so if you observe here uh, this one gamma will be cancelled and what you will get as the next thing is gamma n upon gamma of 2n this is equal to 1 upon 2 raised to 2n minus 1 into gamma of 1 by 2 that value we already derived that is square root of pi upon gamma of n plus 1 by 2 because we know that gamma 1 by 2 is root pi so just uh, taking the cross multiplication we will get the required the formula so this implies gamma of 2n taking only gamma 2n on this side and adding all other terms on the other side we get uh, this is equal to say two raised to two n minus one, two raised to two n minus one upon root pi into gamma n into gamma of n plus one by two. So this is our duplication formula. It's a very important result. Okay. So this is about uh, all uh, different uh, results and properties of beta and gamma functions. So in the next lecture, we are going to uh, solve some problems based on, on these results, what we have derived in this uh, in the in this first four or five lectures. So till then, goodbye. Thank you.